now it's a better morning when I actually say good morning. We start turning down our music. Welcome to the Morning Word Studio. We have gone through a name change. Uh, relax your mind since you were last here. Uh, now the Morning Word Studio. I called the Morning Word Studio just because I want it to be a place where people can throw me their creations. We create together. It is uh, just kind of a a little tweak on words, and I don't have to change the acronyms for all my my files. Up, oh, we got Alex 5K here. Um, we have our um, <clears throat> oh goodness, I forgot what you call them, but people that uh just kind of uh, try to do things in the chat that are weird. So welcome to the stream. Um, glad to see you guys are back. Um, I have continued to try to do the streaming thing, of course, and. Uh, let me make sure that my music is all a-okay. Good. Yeah, it's on random. Um, but uh, I actually, last week, I had so much trouble with my uh, with my car, and I'm still trying to work out all that trouble that I, my wife and I had to carpool so many mornings, and as a result, I couldn't do the stream every day. It has been 79, 79 streams. That's crazy. Um, so a couple of things... I am going to start today by reading a poem, and this poem is going to be an important poem as part of the stream because I have been commissioned by my writing friend who is helping me in the poetic arts. I have a friend that I am learning from how to do, improve my poetry. He has asked me to rewrite this poem in my style, which is gonna be really interesting. Um, but before we do that, one thing which I also am gonna be introducing is every week, once a week, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I'm reading. Because I think that generally anybody that's interested in kind of this stuff might be interested in reading or interested in books. And I just kind of pick stuff up all over the place when it comes to reading. And I wanna get into a better habit of trying to read one book a day. So, or not one book a day, one book a week. So this week, I am reading The Double by Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky is my favorite author. Um, he, I love his literature. It's like a combination of a soap opera, Russian history, and uh, deep existential uh, quandaries. And so his books are so good. The Double, I'm nearly done with it already, but still. Um, the Double is about... Um, oh! <laughs> Relax Your Mind is asking, did you have the privilege of watching two old guys argue last night no, I did not. I actually um, made sure to avoid the two old guys arguing last night. Uh, it really was not where I wanted my heart to be. Uh, believe it or not, um, my wife was a little disturbed by what um, she saw through social media, not necessarily watching the debate herself either. Um, it really is uh, troubling, the whole thing, for me. <laughs> That's how I put it, but... Um, so I, I tend to find that poetry has been as of recently an escape, but it's only a temporary thing to say that poetry is an escape because you know, at a certain point that poetry has to face the reality of things. And so there's been some poems where I've kind of toyed around with that a little bit, but I'm not really diving deep yet. We still have, what, 39, 38 days left? So I am trying to be positive and not get caught up in it. There we go. You see, the, the highlight, biggest highlight of Relaxing Minds life has been the Tampa Bay Lightning winning the Stanley Cup. I had heard that my 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 own New York Islanders. Um, oh, that I think that's fantastic that you caught me because I was gonna just you know write something kind of in line of the PVP thing um, and kind of continue on that. So I'm gonna write that down here. The Tampa Bay Lightning. Well, that's exciting. That's huge. That's so good. So yes, your next Patreon poem will be about the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, winning the Stanley Cup childhood dream. As a longtime New York Mets fan, who has not seen the New York Mets in his own lifetime win the World Series, I can understand what that must feel like. It must be utterly exhilarating. 
Um, my wife was saying goodbye to me, my beautiful wife. Um, so that will be your next poem, Relax Your Mind. Um, but uh, yeah, so I did not get to watch. So exactly. And that's kind of where our hearts often more oftentimes are is they're in, you know, they're, they're celebrating life, positivity, uh, enjoying and, and enjoying in collaboration and caring. You know, we forget that part sometimes that oftentimes where our hearts really are is in caring. And then when we decide to tune into the news, you know, my, my morning newspaper, which is actually, I like reading the morning newspaper, but just as the morning newspaper, nothing more. Um, but, you know, my newspaper or even getting into the 24 hour news cycle or got awful Twitter, Twitter, um, when we get, when we fall, go into those things, we don't see excitement. Uh, well, we sometimes see a little bit of excitement. We see, we don't see as much excitement and caring and compassion. What we see is a hyper focus on things that are hurtful and, um, dramatic and, you know, everybody's trying to virtue signal. I just, it's not my jam. It's not my place. What I want to do is I want to create beautiful poetry for people, have them have meaningful experiences, take them out into the world. Because if you, it's kind of like, if you focus so hard, and I know I'm rambling here, but if you focus so hard on trying to make the world better by focusing on an issue and getting lobbyists and trying to change laws and and playing the, 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 the steel, you know, playing the, the, the culture war game, then what you're ultimately gonna do is you're gonna get all caught up in it. You're not gonna actually accomplish anything. You might accomplish some things, you might accomplish a little bit, but it's very Pyrrhic, a Pyrrhic victory because over the course of actually accomplishing the political and social goals you want, you alienate people, you cause division, you aggravate your enemies, and so then when they take control of the House or Senate later on next term, where does it look? What does it look like? What happens? So instead, if you live your life in a caring way, what you'll do is the people around you will be uplifted. And your circle isn't that large, but it is kind of large. And then if you uplift the people around you, they might say, oh, I want to uplift the people around me. So that bounces from person to person to person. So like, like take racism. Um, I think that there are very important changes that have to be made on a societal level. But where they start, they start with me. They start with my choices and how I choose to um, be proactive in being, you know, in, in trying to make sure that I am um, just a person that, that cares deeply about all races equally. And so I don't try to, I don't look at color when, I, when people are talking to me, when on the street, I say hi to everybody. Like, that's just like, and those seem to be like basic things. And you might think, well, Joe, that's not solving anything, but it is. Because if I do it and somebody else sees me do that, I go, oh, okay, well, he's doing that. And then it kind of bounces around and then suddenly you have societal change from the ground up. So the point is, is when you have everybody trying to change everything from the top down, what you end up with is two old men arguing in a room with hundreds of thousands and millions of people watching. And that's fine, it's fine to watch. Um, I, I gather it was probably very entertaining, but um, it doesn't, did it accomplish a lot? Like not the watching, but the actual debate itself. So those are my two cents. And you don't have to take, I'm not an expert in political things, but I'm an expert in being a human in the world. So at least that's where my place is in that. I really wanna write about that. But I have like five poems I've got to write this morning for other things. I'm gonna write about it. Who cares? I'm gonna write about it anyway. I'll take the hour today and I'll, I'll try to make the whole hour work. And I'll make it a quick poem. Quick poem about two old men arguing in a room. Let's see if I can make that, make this work. But we still have not yet read our intro poem for today and we have not and i was going to discuss my book but we'll discuss my book tomorrow if i i find that if i do these things every day 
I, it's it's weird. Like then I'll be like, what do I do now? Because sometimes I run out of topics, and then other times it's like when I don't do them every day. That's when everything gets a little crazy. Alrighty. Since the debate's going to be on a lot of people's minds, so kind of drawing back from my own excitement about the conversation I was just kind of having with the world, and feel free to chime in in the chat if you have any thoughts, feelings on this all. Um, but uh, kind of stepping back from that, I, I want to think as a poet that this was something that a lot of people were really, found really important. And I, all I have is headlines, and all the headlines that I have is that it really was not a civil debate. That's our title. So, um... That is all that I really am gathering from from this. So if I say something and you guys read it and you go, wow, he really doesn't know what he's talking about. It's true, because I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it and I didn't, um, uh, I only have what I know from headlines, but what I have gathered from uh, headlines and friends and what I've gathered is what we had kind of discussed and even what the way that Relax Your Mind pointed it. Did you have the privilege of watching two old guys on?
Alrighty, a little warm-up poem, I would say. And the thing is, is ultimately this all does get, I don't delete, I don't ever throw out anything. So this will get put in like a binder and then when I'm looking back and I'm like, what did I write on the day after the debates? A historic debate before everything went to craziness. <laughs> If it does go to crazy, um, we'll tune down our music here. Civil. Debating the ways the grass grows greener on the other side. Careful, collaborated rehearsal of ideas and interruptions. With role models rolling in their graves. I want to reach into the television, pull myself towards the elegant podiums and proclaim, there are flowers, sunrises over mountaintops, new grandchildren, and internet everywhere. And drop the balloons, bring out the dancing lobsters and listen. Listen for the smile on the face of each child playing. Listen for the beauty each artist is creating. Listen for the whisper that each God is speaking and receive the gifts each opponent is so missing. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the, um, the intro poem. So, on to today's project for myself. Um, put that aside. I got to date it. Always got to remember to write the date. <clears throat> so I am going to read this poem called Dover Beach. I've never read it before. Um, and the challenge that I have been issued by my poet teaching friend 
is to rewrite this poem in my style, trying to capture the original meaning, possibly using the same imagery. So I'm going to read it. <clears throat> Dover Beach. The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. The moon lies fair upon the straits. On the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand, grim glimmering and vast, out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air, only for the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon-blanched land. Listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand. Begin and cease, and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow, and bring the eternal note of sadness in. Sophocles long ago heard it on the Aegean, and it brought him in his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. We find also in the sound a thought hearing it by this distant northern sea. The sea of faith was once, too, at the full and round earth's shore, lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled. But now I only hear its melancholy, long withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of the night wind, down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world. Ah, love, let us be true to one another. For the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And here we are as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. Dover Beach. Well, that was more depressing than I expected, um, but that is okay. I have written sad poems before, and I can do it again. So now bringing in my friend's email. Um, rewrite one of the poems below in your own style. Free to, feel free to change anything you like about the poem, so long as you still capture the same feel and theme bonus points you can utilize the same symbolism imagery in your own way. So, what are some of the things that I am feeling in this poem? Well, to start, I have this last paragraph, and I remember reading this last paragraph a long time ago. Neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor servitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. The eternal note of sadness in. There's a line here that I think captures the meaning of this poem. And that is because this buffeting of the waves continues on and on, and the reader and the and the and the writer hears eternity in that, but here's a sad eternity. I wonder what he's referencing to the sea of faith. and dumb maybe
I'll bring back our music as I go through and make notes on this poem and prepare to rewrite it. Good morning, Tuchio Alex. I am rewriting a poem called Dover Beach. All right, I think I got it. Now, obviously, my rewrite's gonna be very different. And part of this is not for me to try to do a certain thing a certain way. It's meant to just give my tutor friend, he's a tutor, an understanding of why, of what this is gonna, like, what my take on this style is like. Let me get this on here. So what you are now going to see is Dover Beach. Reinterpreted. Just, I'm kind of nervous about this one, actually. Like, really nervous. Did to get the big paper out. And I want to make sure I'm, I got through them. Right. Get to writing.
I may be breaking my rule here, where I can't change the meaning of the poem. But I think it's changing. But this is part of the exercise, is what does this look like when I do this? So, let's see. I think that'll keep that'll work with it. All right. All right, great. Let's see you read this poem. So this is um, a poem. So I read earlier. I'll lower my music here. I read earlier Dover Beach, which is a poem that is about, it's a sad poem. It's a poem about um, how uh, there's an eternal note of sadness in the waves as this listener, this writer is listening to the waves of Dover Beach. And ultimately uh, he asks his love to be true to him because the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain, slept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. So, um, feeling a sense of powerlessness. It's actually a very good poem for our, our time period. But I read it, rewrote it, as part of my exercise. The poem that I wrote is entitled, Where the Waves Meet the World. I walk the shoreline. Horizons of white caps fill a mind flung across the highest hopes. The endless sea, the disappearing line of the shore into the distance. What is a memory? What is the memory of each grain of sand split into this ridgeway of rock rising above me? What is the ambition of each rolling thunder, soft water filtering in between jagged edges of mites of mica? To erode, erode each and every obstacle, wearing down the continents, old men persisting long after their due, sitting in isolation, Surrounded by death? My youth trembles to think to face this slow water torture alone. And I see you, the goddess, wife of Poseidon, strolling in the still waters of every puddle I pass. It is you, it is only you, for in your beach tan hands do I see the waters change, the waves cease in the never-ending erosion of the world, forgotten for a moment. The never-ending erosion of the world, forgotten by a moment. So I think what I learned from this exercise, and it is a great thing to do, if you're ever look interested in kind of expanding your poetry or trying poetry, take a poem that's already been written and try rewriting it. See what it sounds like to you. Because there's no real right answer to that. Um, the only thing is you want to try to keep the, the original theme. And if you can't, what does that say about you as well? And what does this say about me? It says that I'm the perpetual optimist because Dover Beach is definitely less of a joyful poem than even mine was. And while mine is still very dour in terms of the world, never-ending erosion of the world is still a thing, I capture that meaning. It's about being forgotten for a moment. Um, 
But that could also be a sad thing. Like, oh my goodness, all is that all we can do is just forget the erosion of the world for one moment? For a quick moment? And then it's just a bunch of quick moments of forgetting? Is that what life is? To be always trying to run away from sadness? Dover Beach thinks so. And I think my poem kind of mirrors that. But I like this perspective. And I like changing it to something which is a little more... Um, out of my wheelhouse. And I think that one thing which I can't get away from is the sense of self, the presence, is very prevalent in my poetry. Cool. Well, this was really fun to be on here and to be working through these poems. If you have any thoughts, any ideas, I'll take a request. We have some time if you have requests. Relax Your Minds poem, I think I'm going to do that next stream. Um... Tomorrow, I will work on Relax Your Mind's poem as well as a wedding poem, as well as someone else's poem. There's a lot of poems that I'm going to work on tomorrow and the next day. It's good to be back. I really should have been able to stream yesterday, but the car thing just keeps coming up. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. If you have not subscribed, please consider not subscribing, but following um, as I try to reach 50 followers and try to get myself into affiliate status. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in to the Morning Word Studio, and you have a great day. Day. Twitch here, Alex, reminding me to make a self promo post in the Discord. I will do it. I will absolutely do it.